We are live. Yes. We are recording. Thank you so much for taking out some time. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So let's start at the at the beginning. Um, okay. How did uh, Third Eye ended up as being uh, an Audible original? How did that come about? So I wrote Third Eye many years ago. I think it was like 2015, 16. And I thought it was like the best thing I ever wrote. And I took it out to Hollywood thinking it was going to get snatched up and I was going to be on some posters. And unfortunately, it did not happen. And, you know, I should have just kind of like moved on, but I could not let go of this project. So like a couple of years later, at the end of like 2018 or something like that, I had a meeting with Audible and I was like, hey, uh, I have this project I can't stop thinking about it's about a chosen one who fails and i play the lead character and it's like a it's kind of making fun of some tropes in the fantasy world but actually it has a lot of heart and it's a huge epic and would you like to make it and they read the script and were like go and that was right before COVID hit so i ended up writing the whole thing by myself 400 pages which i'm like why i I just intended on having like a writer's room and, but unfortunately with COVID, I was like, let's do this. And I couldn't be more thankful for the experience. It's 10 episodes now. It's like seven hours. And it really is a story that I never knew that I would be able to write that is now can be put in your ear holes. So that's, sure. that's the story of third eye. <laughs> I love it. So how did, um, how did Neil Gaiman come on as the narrator? How'd that come about? Well, I know Neil from just like social uh situations and he is such a gentleman and what a, uh, such a wonderful person and actually all the people in the cast beside it like two or three people were just friends of mine so of course i always dreamed that neil would be the narrator when i i added it in to adapt it for audio but i never expected him to say yes or have the bandwidth and i wrote the part of robigus for my friend will wheaton and he was so kind to do it and on and on and on So it really is a bunch of friends getting together to record this thing that I put my heart and soul into. And I can only just be grateful that they read the script. They wanted to do me a favor and it was during COVID. So we were all kind of bored. So it all came together and I'm so, so proud of it. That's amazing. That's so cool. Um, You know, I guess, uh, how was the recording sessions? Were they together or separate? I mean, I'm assuming probably separate because of COVID. No, you know, uh, we actually managed to work around that. We were under COVID protocol, so everybody be masked. There were a lot, we had to be testing and all this stuff. But um, I really was, I really, in my experience of listening to audio projects, felt like sometimes it felt very stiff and boring. And I wanted everything to feel like it was really happening and be as visual as possible. So I brought my friend Jonah Ray into voice direct and he is a stand-up, an improviser. He also directed me uh, and acted with me on a television show um that a lot of people have watched so i was like i think that he's going to be able to get this more spontaneous feel um, from the actors and when we discussed it we were like it's really important that we at least have one session with the actors um who act together so they can feel what they sound like in their mind so not only did we get the core cast together me and london and lily pichu uh london hughes plays my best friend sybil aurora moonglow who's like this trashy sort of uh scammy fairy and then kate uh lily pichu who is a big online personality but an amazing voiceover actor she uh she plays kate who comes in and blows my life up um so anyway we we (laughs) recorded quite a bit together and then anybody who had a romantic arc we made sure to be able to get them together so that they could act together because that chemistry is something you just can't fabricate sure no i mean i've i've listened to the book now and yeah. um, you know, that's one thing. Like it felt like it was all together. That's amazing. So, you know, I'm glad it was because that's what I was kind of assuming. But well, uh, when when an actor wasn't in the room, I was reading the lines. So I would read all the lines and Laurel, my character, the failed chosen, she's in every single scene pretty much. Um, so it was a little bit of a ah, I'm playing this character and I'm doing a Frank voice and then I'm Laurel again. But I ended up recording my part probably like 50 times each in every scene. So the editors definitely had a lot to choose from. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. And um, you have the Guild uh, alums, uh, uh, Jeff Lewis and Amy Akuda, kind of, uh, they appear in the book as well. How was that reunion? I you? mean, I love them so much and I just love working with them. And they are the funniest people on the planet to me. So 
being able to bring them into the fold and give them some parts was a dream come true and, and a nice acknowledgement. There are Easter eggs all the way through this. If you're a fantasy fan, if you're a gamer, you'll hear some nods and some winks here and there. But it's not just about parody, it's about heart and it's about the, uh, the, the, the arc of these characters and how they grow and how they support each other, even though they're all kind of screwed up <laughs> and some really <laughs> messed up stuff happens. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Um, yeah, you mentioned, um, you know, that the, the story has an abundance of geek and gaming culture Easter eggs. Um, are you able to give us like a sneak peek of like one or two? I mean, my favorite one is about Final Fantasy VII. I don't want to nice. spoil it. Yeah, I know what you and mean. And then there's also a joke that Neil Gaiman gets to do about a Benihana <laughs> which made me laugh so hard. I will tell you my initial writing, it had a lot more references and I took a lot out only because I wanted them to mean something when we use them. I wanted them to be the very best references, the very best jokes. And I didn't want to date the piece. I don't want anybody in five years to not understand who I'm referencing. Although I couldn't let go of a Property Brothers joke, which probably will get dated, but I don't care. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Um, so comparing to some of your other work, like let's, like, let's say like the guild, for instance, how does third eye compare in terms of scale for you? Well, I will say that the length of third eye is the same length as all six seasons of the guild. Oh so God. the amount of writing that I wrote and I wrote the guild over six, seven years. So <laughs> to write all that in like a year, you know, less than a year and rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. I was so grateful to be able to do all of it at once because even though it took years to write, you know, and there were, I wasn't literally writing all the time. There were long gaps between it because of COVID and all these other things. But at the end of the day, I was able to have fresh eyes on it many times and really refine it in a way that you never get to do mostly on TV. And I hope that people hear that, you know, there's a reference in episode one that you'll have a call back in nine and that kind of writing you can't do unless you write something as a whole and you spend a long time with it. And I will say that the Audible exec uh, who gave me notes um, really felt really additive and helpful versus Hollywood notes I've gotten in the past that just felt gutting and terrible. So it really restored my faith in collaboration and having input from people to make something just better than you could make it alone. So yeah, it was amazing. And I hope people really feel that, you know, it's it's not an audiobook, but you could think of it as a performed audiobook, or you could think of it as a television show for your ears. Either way, right. it works. Yeah, no, it was blessed. Um, so what would you say was your biggest challenge bending the genres between like science fiction, fantasy, comedy? You know, I think, yeah, I think that I mean, I know this probably sounds strange, but the tone was always the easiest part because it is my voice. And if you watch the guild, you'll be like, oh, this is the same writer. My friend Jonah, who directed, he was like, when he after he read the scripts, he's like, this is the most Felicia Day thing I've ever read. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> so, you know, I've always had a quirky sensibility. I always have, you know, so I always want to tell a joke, but I also always want to put heart underneath everything. And I also want people to root for the characters. And so it's not just a farce or a parody. That, like, is too superficial. That would not get people through seven hours. This is really a story with some really funny characters that has comedy. But at the end of the day, everybody grows, everybody changes and yeah. everybody learns something about themselves. And there's some dramatic, you know, stuff as well between you and your mother. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, so there's some some really great stuff there. Well, you know, I really wanted to kind of dissect the idea of like a failed prodigy and what 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 would happen there. So, yeah, thank you so much. There are some there's some deep moments, but there's a lot of laughs, too. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I know that you're a big gamer, obviously. Um, you know, what are some of your recent favorite games besides, you know, on a different uh, note? Well, I love Fay Farm, which was an incredible farming slash. It's kind of like Stardew Valley meets Animal Crossing. I really Ooh. loved it. I, I just tore through the whole, uh, you know, the whole game in probably two weeks, which, you know, probably you shouldn't have played that many video games, but it was just addictive. <laughs> I love Baldur's Gate 3. I've been, um, you know, trying to get that co-op game going, but my schedule with my friends is so frustrating. I want to dump them and just play a solo game because it's so great. <laughs> and uh, wow, I mean, the Cyberpunk DLC has really perfected what was already an amazing game. So I'm playing that. And I just love video games. You know, I, I definitely can be found several times a week streaming, not 
not as a constructed part of my day. I just love it. And, you know, if I play it publicly, I can rationalize that I'm working, but I'm not. I love it. That's so cool. So, <laughs> you know, um, so having listened to the book, um, I was kind of pulled into this world that you created. You know, are there any plans to kind of continue with uh, future installments or whatnot? You know, that's up in the air. The great thing is I own this, just like I own the guild. So, you know, if an opportunity arises, um, I could definitely continue with these characters in some format. I was really uh, clear and Audible was really clear that to make this a satisfying whole. So if there's never any more Third Eye, this could stand alone and I would be super proud of it. Sure. But of course, you know, when you spend this long with characters, you want to kind of revisit. And the wonderful thing is there's a lot of formats to play in. And so who knows what will spring up i'm just really proud of the format it is now and i hope people you know explore i know audio projects like this are not super familiar to a lot of people but you know i love working in formats i've never worked in before and you know this is this is really satisfying and i hope people find it to be that for themselves oh, that's amazing well listen felicia i really appreciate you taking out some time Thank this you, Mike. It's been a blast. And, um, was it worth waiting for 15 years for this interview? You know it was. I know that you wanted me to. You Absolutely. To <laughs> Absolutely. This has been a blast. I'm still a little nervous, so, Stop. but I'm uh, super really excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for covering me, and I'm sure we'll do it again before the next 15 years. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you have a great day, all right? All right. Bye, Mike.